الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. The surah is a surah that uh, many people like. سورة الكوثر is a Meccan surah and the name used in uh, the majority of the books of tafsir is Al-Kawthar. It was revealed after Al-Adiyat and before Al-Takathar. People like it because it's short. Seriously, they can finish Salah faster, maybe 20 seconds faster, 30 seconds. See, this is a problem. When we start a stopwatch at Salah and it's like we're in a race, you know. Uh, it is the shortest along with Al Asr because they both have three verses, but it is the smallest because it has the least number of words in the Quran. Correct? Good boy. Uh, Allah Azza wa Jal says, Inna a'atayna kal kawthar. Indeed, we have granted you, O Muhammad, Al-Kawthar. Now, alayhi salatu wasalam. This surah is like Surah Al-Duha and Surah Al-Sharh. was a surah that was revealed, and Surah Yusuf, was revealed to console the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. What had happened is that the Prophet وسلم, after he was commissioned, he had lost his son Al-Qasim. The Prophet had three sons, two in Mecca and one in Medina. Al-Qasim and then Abdullah and then Ibrahim in Medina. Al-Qasim and Abdullah from Khadija and Ibrahim from Maria. So Al-Qasim died before he was commissioned as a messenger. Abdullah was uh, born after that. And uh, for Arabs, sons meant a lot. As we all know, they used to bury their daughters alive. Right? So sons were uh, like a heritage for them. So the Prophet وسلم, lost Abdullah after he was commissioned as a messenger. At that, the Quraysh rejoiced a lot because they thought that by the death of this boy, this call of Muhammad وسلم, will end after his death because they thought that it's something that he is going to leave behind for his son who will just continue what his father used to do. It's like a dynasty, you know. It's bad enough to lose someone you love. And the dearest you can lose is a son. But what makes it worse is when someone mocks you, makes fun of you for the death of that loved one, and expresses his ultimate joy because you lost someone you love. That deepens the pain in your heart. So when the tragedy of losing the son, and it is a tragedy, Allah called death, فَأَصَابَتْكُمْ مُصِيبَةُ الْمَوْتِ The tragedy, the disaster of death befalls you. So when this tragedy happened to the Prophet Wasallam, he was extremely grieved and saddened. And they said, Butira Muhammad. Butira means in Arabic to become cut off. He lost his son, so he's cut off. His mission is going to become cut off as well. So he was saddened. So Allah Azza wa Jal wanted to console his messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this story is nothing but a, a sample of the type of harm the Prophet 
had to go through for me and you to be Muslims. You, we must appreciate this. We must always remember that all difficulties he went through Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were for me and you to be saved from the fire of hell. So Allah Azza wa Jal sent down this uh, surah to console him and the believers to make their hearts firm. Inna, it is us. A'tainaka, who have granted you this? And A'tainaka is said in the past tense here. It's not Sanu'tika, Sawfa Nu'tika. In the future, you, no, you've already, it's already yours. We've already granted this for you. You already have it. So, if we have tested you by the loss of your son, and they ridiculed you, and rejoiced at that, well, good news is that you have something better. We have granted you Al-Kawthar. The description of Al-Kawthar is something that's so thrilling, subhanAllah. Anas radiallahu anhu, Anas ibn Malik, and this is reported by an Imam Muslim. He said, we were with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once, and he kind of dozed off. He, his head nodded. And then he raised his head and smiled, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And why wouldn't he listen to the rest? He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was just revealed to me earlier, meaning while he was dozing off, a surah, and then he recited, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. إِنَّا أَعْطَيْنَاكَ الْكَوْثَرُ فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَانْحَرُ إِنَّ شَانِئَكَ هُوَ الْأَبْتَرُ Then he said, Do you know what Al-Kawthar is? They said, Allah wa Rasuluhu a'lam. Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, know best. He, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, It is a river in Jannah. Allah promised me it, the Almighty, and it has an abundance of goodness. And then he started, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, started describing. He said, there is a pond branching out of it. Which is the pond where all the believers will go and drink from before they enter Jannah. Except for a group of people who will be prevented from reaching it. And the Prophet ﷺ would say, Ummati, Ummati, my nation, these are from my nation. It will be said to him, you don't know what they've done after you turning away from the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, from the instructions of the Prophet ﷺ, it's dangerous. You walk up to a brother, you say, brother, do this. Ah, it's only a Sunnah, brother. It is as if you're saying it is a trivial issue. It's only something that the Prophet ﷺ did. SubhanAllah. It's only a Sunnah. It was never reported that any of the companions, when they heard an instruction from the Prophet ﷺ, asked him whether this was mandatory or only recommended. They would immediately adhere. They didn't care about the level, an obligation or recommendation. They would do. When he's prevented them, they would refrain. 
oh, it might be makruh. No, they, that was not them. And that's why they deserved radiallahu anhu. Allah was pleased with them. Then he sallallahu alayhi wa continues to say, my ummah will come to this pond on the day of judgment. It will have this pond. It will have containers as many as the number of the stars. Now we don't know how many stars there is or there are, right? Do we know? No one knows. Science hasn't reached this yet. That's why they call it, they call the heavens infinity. They don't know what's, they keep discovering galaxies after galaxies and and each galaxy has billions and billions of stars and who knows? He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the containers which people will use to, to drink with are as many as the number of sky, the, sky, the, the stars in the skies. And then he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, there would pour into it two streamlets, their source is in paradise. So it will be going into the river and the river will be branched to that pond. One of them is made out of gold and the other one is made out of silver. Now this is only the streamlets that pour that water that's gushing out of Jannah into it. The, the, by the way, the word kawthar is derived from kathir, abundance. But how many, what's the extent of this abundance water that is needed to make all of these people drink who are going to be around the pond of the Prophet That's a lot of water that we're going to need. Right? Well, since the source is Jannah, then the answer is there. Then he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, and this is in Bukhari and Muslim, whoever takes a sip out of that will never experience thirst after it. In other words, and this is, of course, before we enter Jannah. We ask Allah to make us amongst them. Allahumma amin. This is before we enter Jannah. This means once we enter, after this sip, once we enter Jannah, which will take place after that, we won't be drinking because we're thirsty. It's just for... What? Just out of enjoying ourselves. Jannah is beautiful. No eyes have seen. No one has heard of anything the like of Jannah. And no one can perceive that bliss and enjoyment in that beautiful eternal place. We ask Allah to make us amongst those who reside in the highest level of Jannah. Allahumma amin. And then he started describing Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and these are different narrations. He described the, the river, and this is reported by Ibn Hibban, classified as authentic by al Albani. He said, the, uh, the banks of the river have on them domes of pearls, all along the, both of the banks. He said, I struck my hand on the mud of that river. And what was the result? He said, it was smelling like a sharp smell of musk. Yes, this is the mud of the river. Allahumma inna nas'aluka min fadlik. And its gravel is made out of pearls. 
He said, the two banks themselves now, they had on them pearls, those of pearls. Now the banks of themselves, he said, are made out of gold. The riverbed where the water runs uh, has ruby and pearls. Yes. And its water is sweeter than honey and whiter than snow. And another narration, whiter than milk. And this is reported by Ibn Majah, classified as authentic by Al Albani. I don't want to talk anymore, man. This is this is just too thrilling. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-jannah. When the Prophet ﷺ is promised this, that he's already been granted something like this, and him and the believers hear that. This would certainly console him in the situation he's in. It will make him ignore what is happening from these kuffar of Quraysh. أَعْطَيْنَاكَ الْكَوْثَرِ أَعْطَيْنَاكَ كَ Mean you, only you. We single you out. It is for you, only you, as a way of honoring you. But of course, we will be drinking out of that, and that's from the Prophet ﷺ. Not only us, any believer who is going to enter the Jannah, meaning it's not only the people in this masjid, okay? The Ummah of Muhammad ﷺ. Uh, this verse alone from the surah gives us a lesson that no matter how difficult a hardship is no matter how painful life can get if we remember the reward we will get for persevering through whilst holding on and receiving this qadr of Allah with contentment, it will certainly brush off the effect of the difficulty and make our hearts stronger to go through it in hope of the reward promised for those who do so. So pray to your Lord and sacrifice. In other words, just like we have granted you this Al Kawthar, this river, as a way of expressing your gratitude, pray. And sacrifice. Uh, sacrificial animals are different types. Camels, cows, sheep and goats, right? For sheep, goats, and cows, the, the technical word is ذَبِحَ right? For camels, it is called نَحْر and the difference between the two is where you place the blade when you're slaughtering the animal. But the issue here is that out of all these sacrificial animals, the most expensive are camels. So Allah Azza wa Jal used wanhar. The word that makes it known that what you need to sacrifice is the highest. So when Allah Azza wa does something good to you, وَلَا تَيَمَّمُ الْخَبِيثَ مِنْهُ تُنْفِقُونَ Don't use the worst 
of your wealth and spend it for the sake of Allah. You got a worn out thobe? Oh, Allah Azza wa Jal uh, did this to me, I'm going to... No, give the best. Give the best. Anfiqu min tayyibati. From the best of what we have granted you. So, Allah Azza wa Jal instructed the Prophet Sallallahu to do two things. One that is related to physical movement, the body, Salah, whether it is optional Salah or the five daily prayers. And then he told him to do something that is though physical yet very difficult for the heart. Giving up your wealth is something that's difficult. It needs effort between you and your heart. It's a battle between you and shaitan. Because Allah says, الشَّيْطَانُ يَعِذُكُمُ الْفَقْرُ You lose, you give up a thousand dollars, what are you going to do for the rest of the month? Or you give 5,000 riyals, well you need this and you need that, the car needs a tire, your wife needs this and your son needs diapers and everything comes to your mind. Shaitan will bring every single thing that you have and you don't have as a responsibility and remind you with it. Why? So you don't spend. So it's a difficult thing to do. And that's why the reward is abundant for those who spend. It's enough that Allah Azza wa promised those who spend that He will provide for them. And that this spending is not actually going to decrease your wealth. As the Prophet ﷺ said. Charity does not. We, we, we learned in, in the university that 10 minus 1 equals 9. Well, not in Islam. When it's sadaqah, 10 minus 9 does not equal 1. Because Allah promised 700 folds. And Allah will multiply more for whomever He wills. It depends on your sincerity. It depends on the amount you're spending with, in comparison to what you actually possess. All these factors make a, a, a difference. Now, one thing that is also very important here is that wanhar, there is also an indication in it that inhar li, sacrifice that for me only. Just like Allah Azza wa said at the end of Surah Al-An'am, قُلْ Say, O Muhammad, inna salati wa nusuki wa mahmiyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alam. Say, O Muhammad, my prayer and my slaughtering and my life and my death are all for the Lord of the worlds. So I do everything, again here in this ayah, is, it's mentioning salah and sacrificial animals. The connection again. Some of the scholars said that uh, in this verse is a, is a lesson. They said, uh, regardless of how much we do and what we do, we will never be able to thank Allah enough for what He has granted us. So when Allah is instructing Muhammad وسلم, to pray and offer uh, a sacrificial animal, it's not this for that. It is just to express your gratitude to Allah. It is only for that. Because you can never repay Allah Azza wa Jal. Okay, Allah Azza wa Jal made you pass your exam, for example. You were jobless and Allah provided you with a job. You think that's it? Don't you talk? That's a blessing. Can't you see? That's another one. Can't you walk? There are people who are paralyzed. 
Don't you have a roof covering you? There are people who are misplaced, homeless people, and so on and so forth. So we can never repay Allah Azza wa Jal. So the idea he, here is not to repay him. It's just to, sh to show gratitude to Allah Azza wa Jal for these favors that he has blessed, with, blessed us with. And another thing is, regardless of what we do, what we do is not going to be the reason why Allah will admit us into Jannah. So in other words, Allah is not telling Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so that you become deserving of Al-Kawthar. No, we've granted you that as a favor. You can never do anything to reach to this level. Regardless of what you do, nothing of what you do is going to be making you deserving of Jannah. It is by the mercy of Allah. As the Prophet ﷺ said, لَن يَدْخُلَ الْجَنَّةَ أَحْدُكُمْ بِعَمَلِهِ None of you will enter Jannah by the virtue of his own deeds. قَالُوا وَلَا أَنْتَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Not even you. He said, وَلَا أَنْ إِلَّا أَنْ يَتَغَمَّدِنِ He said, وَلَا أَنْ إِلَّا أَنْ يَتَغَمَّدِنِ اللَّهُ بِرَحْمَتِهِ Not even me. Except if Allah Azza wa Jal admits me by his mercy, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This tells us that we need to work hard to deserve the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. To be deserving of his mercy, and that takes effort. Brothers, sisters, life is short. What's 60, 70, 80 years compared to infinity? Eternity in Jannah, what is that 60, 70, 80 years? Look at yourself and see how old you are now and look how fast these years have passed. How old are you, 60? That's a snap of a finger. How old are you, 30? That was only yesterday. So let's work and let's work hard. Many people work very hard when it comes to dunya. Long sleepless nights for exams, why they have a master's degree to finish the thesis to, or a PhD or even a bachelor's degree. <coughs> they go without food, not fasting. For the sake of the reward because they just simply don't have time. Well, Jannah deserves that and deserves much more. Inna shani'aka huwa al-abdur. Indeed, your enemy who hates you, who plots against you, who rejoiced for the death of your son, who mocked you because you lost your son, and said Muhammad was cut off, that very person, who al abtar, is the cut off one. Ibn Abbas anhu said, and this is the verse that has a reason for revelation. He said, Ka'b ibn al Ashraf came to Mecca, and the Quraysh said, you're a master amongst your people, that is. Don't you see, Ala tara ila al -abtar, aw al -mabtur. Don't you see to this cut off person because he lost his son? They used to call the person who would lose his son Abtar or Mabtur, the cut off one, because he lost one of his children, especially if it's the only one. Who claims, meaning Muhammad sallallahu that he is better than us, whilst we feed the pilgrims and provide them with water. We take care of the pilgrimage season by taking care of the pilgrims. So he, and we maintain the haram, he said, you are better than him. 
So Allah revealed, إِنَّ شَانِئَكَ هُوَ الْأَبْتَرِ الْأَبْتَر If you remove uh, the alif, they said, بُتِرَ So we have ba ta ra remaining. But Allah put the alif, which is something indicating that the thing after it is the most, the highest of what it is. So, inna shani'aka huwa al-abtar is the most cut off. If they, if they say, butirta, you were cut off, they are going to be the most cut off from any goodness in this life, as well as the hereafter. Let's pause and think. These people in Quraysh, how many people remember them, mention them? Even shortly after their death? None. Compare this to Muhammad and his mission. Muhammad is praised even by non believers. Not only for his manners, by the way. Some praise the system, they say. The system he brought with him is amazing. Meaning, the instructions in Islam. They're actually referring to Islam itself as the religion, but they call it a system. Plus praising him for what he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was as a, as, a, as a character, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now we can recite Surah Al-Kawthar with this in mind and know that this is a great surah, not because it makes us finish salah fast, but because it is something that consoles the heart. When you see Muslims suffering everywhere, hold on and persevere. Inna shani'aka huwa al-abtar. Al-Kawthar is waiting for us. But we have to fasalli li rabbika wanhar. And the consequence of those who are making the Muslims suffer is inna shani'aka huwa al-abtar. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to illuminate our hearts with the light of the Quran. Allahumma ameen. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu.